happy, happy Wednesday, you guys. I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. I am so excited to, to really be digging into fears with you today because fears are just a part of us, right? And I think when we sometimes we're conditioned to kind of push past our fears. Sometimes we're conditioned to just shove them down. And I think we're doing a disservice to ourselves when we do that. I think what we really want to learn to do is to uncover which of our fears are ours, which of our fears are not ours. We can release them, we can journal them, we can um, kind of dig through that conditioning that has happened. And will ultimately release them. And what I have loved about my human design journey is the ability to start to see this inside of myself, to start to recognize where um, these fears come into play inside of my human design and which fears are meant for me and which fears are not meant for me. And I think what we start want to start to do is actually start to use our fear as a catapult. And that's why I kind of called this dancing with your fears, because I truly don't believe that fears are meant to hold us back. I truly don't believe that fears are meant to like keep us stagnant, to keep us rooted in the place. I think they're meant as an indication and not that there's like this wall, not that we should stop moving forward, but more that we should actually see this as an opportunity, that we should look and see, okay, our fear means that I have a preconceived limitation inside of me. I have a belief that I need to work on, a level of consciousness, a level of confidence, something that I can ultimately rework in my mindset and use to my advantage. And what you're going to find at every single level inside your journey is that these fears are going to start coming up for you and that's why I really wanted to look at your human design so you can start to recognize which are your fears and which are your kind of conditioned fears inside of your body because if we can release the conditioned fears and let them go and then we can learn what the fears that are actually ours to hold what those mean for us and how to work through those individually because when you can understand the difference between the two all of a sudden and they take on a whole new meaning, an expansive meaning, right? Like something that now all of a sudden you can start to use as a tool in your tool belt. And I personally feel like that is extremely powerful. So rather than running from my fears, I can start to lean into them and I can ask myself the hard questions. And when I can start to dance with them, all of a sudden, I become that much more powerful, that much more unstoppable, unshakable, um, kind of rooted in myself, right? Rooted in what I'm meant to do, rooted in what I'm meant to be. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to feel fear because fear is just a part of human nature. It's an indicator, right? And it, what's interesting about fear is that we kind of are still like cavemen in a way, right? The way that our bodies are conditioned to react to things, the way that us as a human race are kind of programmed to keep ourselves safe, right? So all the time, we are like scanning the horizon, scanning our surroundings, scanning our situations, and we are mentally checking for all of the things that make us unsafe. These could be physical things, these could be mental things, these could be sub like conscious things, whatever it is. And I kind of, I heard this training once from one of my mentors and she's like, she pictures it like, like a computer inside of her brain where it's like, deet, 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 warning, um, child could drown in the middle of the lake. He could get a cramp and he could drown. And then my decision as a parent in the moment is how do I deal with that imminent fear, right? Because if I was a caveman, my reaction to that is to eliminate all of those dangers because back in the caveman years, those dangers meant possible death, right? And now in the example that I just used, there was imminent death in there. But like another danger would be like, you're walking down the street like danger, he could be holding a knife or danger or um you you know you're you're in a you're in a board meeting and you're and you have an opinion that you want to share danger danger people could look at you strangely danger people could judge that what you say and all of a sudden you're like oh these are the dangers. How do I learn to dance with them? How do I learn to realize what is real and what is not real? Because being judged 
or being ridiculed is not a life and death situation. However, our body's natural response to things is to deal with them as though they, they are. And so we feel that level of fear as though we could die from this right? And we're not going to die from being a little bit vulnerable. We're not going to die from failure. We're not going to die from being judged. We're not going to die from being a risk unless that risk is jumping off a cliff. So I think sometimes we need to like start to uncover and kind of dig into these limitations that we're feeling that we're feeling as fear and start to recognize like which ones are real. So this, this example that I used about a child in the lake, I have to be able to lean on that trust and that truth that my child is a really good swimmer and I don't want him to be on the shore every single day of his life. What I want for him is for him to feel confident in his swimming abilities. What I want for him is to be out in that middle of the lake enjoying his life to the very fullest. And if I rely on my fears to dictate how I move forward in that moment, he's not going to get to experience all of that. And that's the same for you in life. If you rely on your fears to make every single decision before you move forward, you're going to be sitting on that shore a whole lot more. And yes, you're going to be safe and you're going to be cozy. But are you going to be living life to the fullest? Are you going to be experiencing that level of joy that we crave? And are you really going to be able to bring your gifts and your truth and your true self to the world? You are this magical creature inside of you. Every single one of us are. But we have to be brave enough to step off the shore and into the water, right? And into the deep end of that water. If we're going to wade in the shallow end, yeah, we're going to feel a little tiny bit of that magic because we got our feet in the water. We're not on the shore anymore. But there comes a time when it's time to dive into the deep end. And it's interesting. I was actually having a conversation with a client yesterday who, who did a launch, an incredible, beautiful soul business that she's building. And I couldn't be more proud or excited for the journey that she's about to embark on. But the launch wasn't what she expected right? It didn't go as planned. It didn't have the results that equaled the expectation that she had. And that, that therein lies where oftentimes we set our own boundaries and our own limitations. We set them with our expectations. So when things don't reach or hit our level of expectation, we deem that failure and decide that we need to take another path rather than just trusting that everything happens the way that it's supposed to happen, that everything is divine timing, and that we need to trust our path. I have another mentor that calls it following the breadcrumbs. And I think that's what we have to do when we're, when we're building soul-led lives is follow those breadcrumbs that ultimately lead you in your journey forward. And so this client, as we were wrestling with like, okay, well, how do we come back from what she sees as a failure, but I see as this beautiful chapter in her journey that is just going to teach her something, open her up to something, and just be a story that she tells one day, even if it's just an experience that helps her help somebody else get through exactly what she's gone through, right? When we, uh, when we like allow our expectations to decide whether we're a failure or a success, nine times out of 10, it's going to be failure. And so she said, she said, I think that this isn't the right path. I think that I need to do this, 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 and this instead. It's been two weeks. And the truth was this, 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 and this were very, very, very safe roads to take. Safer. They didn't put her soul out there. They didn't make her vulnerable. They, but they didn't also really align with her true soul purpose, which she is very, very clear on her, the purpose of her business. And when I looked at those strategies, I said, yeah, you've got a choice to make, right? We're in this moment. You've got this choice. You can absolutely take those roads. Those roads will work. You will make money. You will build a business and likely it'll be a great business too, right? Um, but is that what you're here to do? Or is that your fear dictating your path? Because there's so many of us that are not willing to step outside of our fear or to learn to dance with our fear. And that's okay. If you wanna live a really safe life up on that shore, that's okay. But I don't want to. 
I want more from my life than that. And I want to be more in my life, but that is going to take me getting off the shore, skipping the shallow end and, jump, and jumping into the deep end. And whatever more looks like for you, there's going to become this point in your life where you're gonna to need to decide to get in the deep end, whatever that looks like for you. If it means putting yourself out on a vulnerable ledge, if it means sharing a part of yourself or a part of your story, a part of your journey that you've never shared before, if it means doing the personal work to heal the things inside of yourself that allow you to show up in that way, those are the things that you will need to do to splash around in the deep end, to swim, because ultimately you will learn to breaststroke and backstroke and doggy paddle and whatever you need in that deep end, but it will take fear to get you there. So I think that fear has a place in our lives, right? Fear is where we believe our limitations to be. But when we start to dismantle those, those fears, those fears don't get to have power over the decisions and the way we lead our lives. They don't get the power. You always, always, always have the power in your hands. Fear is just another tool in your tool belt. It doesn't have to control you. It doesn't have to limit you at all. You are the ultimately the one that makes every single decision in your life, regardless if those decisions are easy or hard. It's always, always, always a decision. Okay, so I wanna teach us how to learn to dance with our fears. I want us to start to understand the fears that are inside of us, and I want to use human design to do those things because it has been extremely eye-opening and empowering for me. All the clients that I've taken through this process have seen massive, have had massive moments with this. So um, you're going to want to be looking at your splenic center in your human design chart. It's on, if you're looking at the screen, it's on the left-hand side, and I believe, let me pull mine up, I believe it's a little triangle. Still got that song in my head. Yes, it's a little triangle on the, the very left hand side. And um, basically what we are going to talk about today is which of these fears are actually ours to carry and to dance with, to like use in our tool belts and which of our these are other people's fears that we're taking on that we will be able to work through and ultimately release that don't need to be a part of our journey so it really doesn't matter um, if your splenic center is defined or undefined, meaning it doesn't matter if it's colored or if it's clear. What we're looking at is actually the gates that come from it. So those little lines that come through it. Um, and you're going to see that some of them are clear or white, whatever you want to call it. Some of them are black and some of them are red. Um, <coughs> the red the white means that those are not your fear the clear ones you are to if you have those fears and i'm going to take you through what each number means and but you want to know what the colors mean first so that you can kind of apply it to that color um the clear ones those are not your fear so if when i talk about these fear gates if it feels like it resonates with you what you're going to start to do is work through that fear look at the condition that look at the stories that have led to you having that fear look at like what you surround yourself with and see how that comes into play and those will be the fears that you're going to ultimately be able to heal and release okay you're going to be able to let those go from your life it might take some work and i i really do recommend using a journal to do that work and it's going to take some moments of honesty within yourself and some moments of insight but those are the ones you don't get to carry you don't have to carry forward with you you get to be like see you later um and then the red ones these are the fears that live more in your subconscious so when i talk about these fears you may not be able to resonate with these right away it may not be like a light bulb moment but i want you to start to go deeper i want you to really look at the ones that have a red line from them and ask yourself where is this showing up inside of my life is this a part of my life and then the black ones these are the ones that live in our conscious and live in our awareness these are the ones that when i say it 
you're likely going to be like, yep, that's me. That's mine. I see that all over the place. The red and the black, these are a part of you. It doesn't mean that it needs to be something that holds you back, but these are going to be a part of you and these are going to surface over and over again. So this is where you learn to dance with them. This is where you learn that it's not a limitation, but a tool. Okay, so you ready to go through the fear gates. So the very first one, um, the very first one is the fear gate number 48. So again, when you're looking at your chart, you look at the little person, the outline of the person, and you see all of the shapes that are on that person. Um, you can look at the very, the triangle that's on the bottom, that's on the very left hand side. It's at the bottom. It's either going to be colored or uncolored, defined or unfined, defined. That doesn't matter. You will see numbers that surround that triangle. Let me read them to you. 48, 57, 44, Oh, that's small. 50, 32, 28, 18. I realized um, earlier this week that my eyes are becoming old eyes. I was trying to read instructions on some medicine. I was like, oh, I'm like all of a sudden I'm my mom trying to like, although I've been supposed to wear glasses every day since I was 17 and never have. So it shouldn't be all that much of um, a surprise to me. But that those are the ones that we're looking at today. Okay. So gate 48, the gate of depth. This is the fear of not being enough. Um, this kind of shows up as not being smart enough, brave enough, pretty enough. This is where the comparison game comes into play and starts to show up for this. Um, you tend to analyze things if you have this gate. Um, like, who am I to do that? Who will buy that? You feel a lot of pressure around that comparison, right? So hands up if the comparison game seems to be really, really re relevant to you, if this comes into play. Now, remember, if this is relevant to you and this is a clear gate, this is not yours to carry. You let this go. You stop playing in that comparison game. If it is red, this might be a little bit in your back, in the back of your head. This might be more in your subconscious. And so start to become aware when you are playing that comparison game, when you are looking at things and, and kind of applying them to your life and it's making you feel like you're not enough. And I think sometimes that this can really uh, like kind of stop us and halt us in our tracks without us even realizing it, right? We see somebody else doing something and all of a sudden that takes away from who we are, right? Um, the truth in this is, and I want every single one of us to know this truth, is that you are absolutely enough exactly as you are right now, right? You would never look at an infant and think, that baby wasn't everything, right? Every single infant is born perfect. And you know what? You die perfect too. And you are perfect at every single stage of the game all the way along, just because you are. You don't need to do anything to be, be any more perfect. You are. And I think there's so much conditioning that comes into play inside this gate and inside of our lives. And I see this all the time in my clients and I used to see this in myself, right? It was like a worthiness thing. Well, I'm worthy of this because I really work hard for this. No, you're worthy of that because you desire that, because you want that in your life. You do not need to work hard to be worthy of something, right? Well, I, and you know, I bought this cottage right now and I'm worried about people judging me about it, but you know what? I work really, really hard, so I deserve to have good things. I'm worthy of good things. You guys, I am worthy of that cottage. I am worthy of wealth. I am worthy of success because I am because I desire those things. And we don't need anybody else's acceptance. We don't need anybody else's validation. We only need to accept and love ourselves and stop judging ourselves and feeling unworthy of the things that we desire. Because that's what ultimately leads to burnout and hustle and all the things, right? And that's where I lived a long piece of my life. And as I look at my own chart, my channel is clear and what that means and and why i realize now that that's not a part of my life is i healed that the process that i've gone through over the course of the last few years was to really heal that 
um, conditioning inside of my life because I was brought up to believe that if you want something in life, you work hard for it. And that the only way to be worthy of that thing, and don't get me wrong, my parents never said to me, the only way to be worthy of success is to work hard. Um, they never said that, but it was in everything that they did, right? It was in the way that they demonstrated things. It was in the way that I was conditioned when I played competitive sports in my life. Those that practiced the hardest, those were the ones that, that succeeded. So if your gate is clear, this is not your fear to dance with. This is your fear to uncover, to release, to let go of, to move, to heal, to move past. Moving along, gate 57, the gate of intuitive, and I have my notes here because I, I, um, I hate to miss anything for you guys. So the gate of intuitive clarity, the fear of the future. So the fear that you won't have enough. Um, you can't feel safe even when things aren't going well. What if it stops? And I see this all the time, right? Because I think that, and you see this all the time when people experience success. All of a sudden they will experience that level of success and then they will be like, but what if this goes away tomorrow? What if this doesn't work again? And this is something that has come up for me over and over and over again. And as I look at my own chart, this is black for me, which means that this is very much in the forefront of my life. And in order to dance with this, what I do is I look for proof that that isn't true right? That you can experience success over and over and over again. And that life isn't like this. Life is an upwards trajectory, an upward trajectory. And that is what I've started to realize in life, right? So um, this could also, <coughs> this can also not necessarily be rational, but it is something that we can feel um, inside of us. If your channel is red and black, I want you to look at the, the color that is right next to the splenic center. If it, like, it will be a little bit in your subcon, like if it changes to red, then it could be um, a little bit in both, but it's mostly predominant in the color that is the closest to your splenic center. So what you need to know is that it's okay to not have control allow your intuition to lead. You don't necessarily need to know what the whole picture looks like before you begin your journey. It goes back to following the breadcrumbs, right? To just taking steps forward. Because what I've learned along the way, and I always thought that you needed to know the whole thing before you got started. And I see this come up in me over and over and over again. And I think I'm even having this moment of clarity as I'm doing this training. Because right now I'm in this, I've been in a cocoon for the last couple of months figuring out what the next quarter, the next year, the next decade looks like inside of my business. And the truth is, is that clarity comes from moving forward. Clarity comes from following and trusting in your intuition. And every single one of us is supported in every single, single thing that we want. There is enough. We don't need to be afraid of the future, right? The future will play out the way that it's meant to play out. Um, and what you, what you have inside of you and what every single human on this planet has, but I somewhat believe that women are more powerful in this, is an inner knowing, right? You actually know everything that you need to know inside of you. It's just learning to trust that deeper inner knowing and not feel like we can't trust that future, right? That success is a one-time thing, that... Um, there isn't going to be enough for everybody or enough for you. Okay, hopefully um, this is resonating with everybody and hopefully you can see that if your gate is clear there, you can let that go. But hopefully you can also see that if it's black or it's red, that you can learn to dance with that. And that's what I'm learning to do. What I'm learning to do is to just trust. And for me, dancing often looks like leaning on trust. And sometimes that trust I can find in proof. And another mentor that I'm working with, and, and this is something that really, really resonated with me, is that there's no such thing as truth, right? You can find proof of every sing, any single thing that you want to find proof on, right? If you want to find proof that um, homeschooling is um, detrimental to children, you can find that. 
out there. It's out there, trust me. If you if you want to find proof that homeschooling is the only way to um, really like bring up your children, the best way to bring up your children, there's proof of that out there too. So what I've learned to do is start to look for the proof that supports the truth that I believe. And when you start to open yourself up to trusting in that proof, you'll find it everywhere. This is going to work right? I tell myself this is going to work. And then what I do is I look for the proof of that. It could be proof that hits me in my own personal life. It could be proof that I see other women demonstrating out there in the world. And what I truly do believe is that if it's possible for her, it's possible for me. And what I also believe is that if I desire it, then it's possible for me. It's meant for me. I just need to follow those breadcrumbs and I just need to trust. Okay. Gate 44, the gate of alertness. So this is the fear of the past. Um, so basically the fear of the future, but based on the past, right? The past coming back to haunt you. Lack of money. Um, collect. Like You can basically, you can collect evidence but in a really negative way. So it kind of goes back to what I was talking about before, right? We can find the proof of whatever we want to find the proof of if we're looking for it, if that's what we're open to. And you may not even realize that that's what you're open to, but that's what's coming in. And so that's obviously what you're paying attention to. What's interesting, like if you think about when you decide that you want a new car and you kind of pinpoint down to what the type the, the, the vehicle that you want. And then all of a sudden, what you realize is that you're like, holy crap, everybody has this vehicle on the road. I see it everywhere. But it's not that there's more vehicles out there today that are that vehicle than there were yesterday. It's just that you're more aware of them. The same thing goes for the proof that we're looking inside of our life, the evidence that we're seeing come into our lives. It's what we're open to. It's what we're conscious of. It's what we're paying attention to. So if you look for the things that support your truth, the path that you're on, the breadcrumbs that you're following, what you ultimately want out of life, you can find that proof and it can move you forward in the most possible way. But if you look with a fear involved, you will find the evidence in a negative way. And what's your job to do is to be conscious of what you're bringing into your life. The proof that you're allowing to be your truth, it is your responsibility to be aware, to be open, to be alert at what you're taking in. Because what you're taking in, that supports the life that you're building, right? I truly believe that like what we kind of bring into our lives, that all of that is energy and all of that energy matters. So I've started to change the kind of the the media that I allow into myself. So I no longer, I shouldn't say ever watch true crime because my husband's a real true crime nut, but I was noticing that it was impacting my sleep and my confidence and my feeling of like goodness in the world. <clears throat> Have you ever watched a really, really scary movie and then you've come out of the theater and you feel like someone's gonna attack you in the parking lot? It's like blah, blah, blah. That's exactly the same way as every single thing that you're absorbing in your world. It all has impact. It all has power. So it's our job to be really, really cognizant of what we allow into our energetic field. If you work in a place that is highly, highly negative, and you think that you can separate yourself from that, I ask you, can you? Because we can build an energetic shield around ourselves. And as an empath, I have learned to do that so that I'm not constantly taking on other people's emotions and feelings. I have built an energetic field, but that takes a lot of energy. And it's not something that I have to do on a daily basis because I'm really cognizant of the energy that I'm bringing into my world because I know the impact that it has on us. Um, what this can stop us to do, like fear of reoccurring experiences, fear of the past, what this can stop us from doing is moving forward or trying something new or growing in a certain way. So if you see failure in your life or in your business in one area and you believe that this could happen again, all of a sudden that fear takes over and doesn't allow you to try it again. 
So this is where you're going to need to be like, okay, this is just a fear I'm going to have, but I'm going to look for the proof that this, this will work for me. And I'm going to continue to follow the breadcrumbs until I figure out a way that it will work for me. I think what I ask myself all the time are the what if questions. What if it does work? What if I could dot, dot, dot? What if I did dot, dot, dot? The what if questions, I think, opus, open us up to a world of possibility, a world of opportunity. They allow us to dream bigger. What if dot, dot, dot? And even if that what if question is so out there, so ridiculous, so monstrous, what if it just allows you to like, do a little bit more that day, dream a little bit bigger and like have a new level of like confidence and opportunity inside of your soul that allows you to take that one step, right? Could that possibly hurt? Okay, fear gate 50, your gate of values, your fear of responsibility. Um, we all have the awareness to take on responsibility for others, but this gate, if you have this gate, you fear that. So it could be like re relationships. It could be having children. It could be growing a team. Um, so if you have black or red in there, you likely fear these this level of responsibility. When you were deciding to have children, you could have had all of these fears around that how what that would mean for your life if you were able to to do this for your children. If you were able to give them the best possible life and what that would look like. If you are growing a team, either in network marketing or as an entrepreneur and growing like a virtual assistant and all that, you ask yourself, can I support them in the best way, right? Am I enough right now with what I know right now to do the things that I need to do to have this level of responsibility? If this fear gate is a dominant one in your life, this is, these are the questions that are constantly running through your head that are actually holding you back from doing those things. So what you need to recognize if it's black or red for you is that this fear is natural. It allows you to ask these questions, but you also need to look for the proof that you are more than capable of taking these steps inside of your life and inside of your business. Look for the proof of other women that are doing it. Look for the proof of things that you've done to date that like give you that level of experience that will allow you to do those things. And if it's clear, if it's white, these are not your fears to hold. They may be your mother's. They may be other business owners that you are interacting with. They may be your spouse's fears, but they are not yours. You can let those go. You can release them and you can be confident in that area. Three more, you guys. Gate 32, the gate of continuity, the fear of failure. And as I look at my own, so my last one, just as an indication, was clear. So I don't have the fear of responsibility. And I really don't. I can see that very easily in myself. Um, but I do have read the fear of failure. So when you believe there are not enough resources to carry everyone, if I, it's kind of that mentality that if I receive this, they don't. There's not necessarily enough for everyone to have everything that they want. There's only a certain number of resources. So if you take them, somebody else doesn't, right? Um, it's kind of, kind of believing that um, limitation. So it can become hard to cheer others on because you don't believe, because um, you believe that if they achieve it, you won't. And I can see this in myself. If I'm being really, really honest with myself, I look at other, other women that are achieving at levels that I desire to achieve at, and sometimes it gives me pause right? It fills my chest with something that isn't necessarily the most positive feeling. And I, I ask myself like the, the questions like, why am I not doing that? Or, oh, like, I don't want to give my clients to her. Or I think that there's not necessarily enough to go around. This isn't the truth in the world. The truth in the world is that there's enough for everyone. 
There's a, like billions and billions of people out there and it's not a rat race to see who gets to the end of the journey, to see who gets the clients, who sees to get, who gets the customers, see who starts first, launches first, does whatever first, right? There is no race because there's enough for every single person. So if you have this fear, you may feel like we may hold ourselves back from succeeding. We may really rely on pushing and hustling because we're always really wanting to get to that finish line. What we need to understand in life is that there is no such thing as a finish line. It's just a journey. And what we need to start to do is lean back in that journey and enjoy that journey for what it is. Because that journey is a really beautiful, magical thing, right? And inside that journey, there's growth and there's success and there's joy and there's enjoyment. And I could see in myself that when I was really focused on hustling and getting to that, to that finish line, then you would get to that finish line and you would almost feel empty inside because you would ask yourself, well, what's next? This can't be the end, the end right? Um, and so again, anybody who um, tuned in late that didn't catch what the difference between black and red is, red is in your subconscious. Black is more in, in your conscious. So if you have a red gate, it may you may have to ask yourself a little bit of a harder question. You may have to dig a little bit deeper to see where this is showing up in your life. So for me, um, this gate is red. And so that's a major indicator to me right now that... I need to be really aware of the way that I'm looking at other people's success and the other people's journeys and not allowing their journeys to have impact on mine, to impact my next step. Because isn't that really one of the scariest things in the world is that if we allow other things, whether it's people, whether it's situations, whatever, to impact the path that we're on and we don't live a soul-led life, are we bringing our gifts to the world in the most honest and true way, right? And for me, I don't want to be rustled by, by other people's stuff, right? I want to be living a business that and building a business that is true to me, that is heart-focused and heart-centered around me. So gate 28 is the gate of the game player, the fear of purpose. I am clear on this one, meaning this is not my fear to carry if I hold it. Um, basically, this is the fear that you aren't going to find your life's purpose. Um, I don't have this fear. I know I don't, but I do know there have been times in my life where I have felt it a little bit, right? And so um, you may have a belief that you have to hit rock bottom to grow. You have to struggle to succeed. You need to go through the weeds to come up um, as a flower. Like you may have to, like it has to be hard before it gets good. That might be a way that this fear shows up inside of your life. So <coughs> you can start to resent the struggle. And so you worry that life is just about the struggle and you feel like it's all out of your reach. The truth is that everything you desire is not only meant for you, but it is within reach. You just have to follow the breadcrumbs to get there. Yes, there's such thing as leaping in life, quantum leaps and taking life and going way forward, but you do have to continue to follow those breadcrumbs. And the truth is every single thing that you want in this life, your purpose in this life, it's yours to have and to hold and to live. The truth is it's meant for you, but you do need to take steps forward to get there, to realize it, to be open to it, to be awakened to it. Where we hold ourselves back is where we think it has to be hard to get be good, right? It kind of goes back to that. I need to work hard to be able to experience success. That is not the truth. There's a lot of people out there that experience high levels of success without ever truly struggling. It doesn't mean that they don't work, but it does. they don't necessarily have to struggle. It doesn't have to be hard before it gets good. And I think we see this in parenting too, right? We kind of tell ourselves all these things, that parenting has to be hard, that we should be sleep de like deprived and all these things. And like we ask ourselves, am I a good parent if I'm not going through that? 
can tell you that parenting isn't really all that hard over here. I mean, there's been hard seasons and I'm sure we'll have challenging seasons in the future too, but I'm, a, I'm willing to allow the good in. I'm willing to allow it to be easy as well. So the very last gate, gate 18, is the gate of correction, the fear of authority. I'm actually so surprised that I do not have red or black in here. I am clear because I feel like I always fear authority. But um, so it must be, I, and now that I can see that I do fear authority, what I need to do is ask myself why. Um, have I had life experiences where this has come into play, where it's conditioned me to fear authority, right? Did something happen in grade school? Did something happen with my parents as I was growing up? Did something happen in my very first jobs? And as I say that, I'm like, yep. Um, and that I can release that. I can let that go. I don't need to dance with that anymore. I don't need that to be part of my life anymore. And how freaking freeing is that? Um, so you fear people in power, parents, bosses, leaders, um, you fear that they will use their position to harm you. Um, and this may cause you to fear, be, fear even becoming a person in power, right? Because if you're afraid of these people, you don't want to have that same impact on other people if you are to rise into that power. So if this is true for you, I want you to know that it is safe to step into that power, that the fear of all of those things isn't necessarily something that is true, right? You may fear being judged. You may fear that people higher up will squash you. You may fear that making mistakes because you'll be judged by that. The truth is that it is safe to step into power. It's safe because you are your own person. You decide on your own actions. You make your own choices. You get to be whoever you want to be. And so we can't always control how other people um, show up for us or treat us, but we can, we can always control how we show up for ourselves and how we show up in, in every situation, right? We get to control that. And if we control that by putting a guard around ourselves and that changes how we show up, the way that we share, the words that we use, the personality that shines through, then all we're doing is diminishing our light, all we're doing is diminishing our light. And I think what I really want you to get through, that's all the gates, you guys. And what I really, really want you to do as you move through this training, because I truly believe that this is the kind of training that you come back to all the time. And especially for your gates that are both red or black. And remember that if they are red and black partway through, you, you look more at the color that is closest to your splenic center. Um, if they're both, it, uh, these are the kinds of things that are going to come up all the time. So what happens as we move through life, as the kind of people that you and I are, as we are striving for more, as we're building our lives, as we're bettering ourselves, as we're building businesses, as we get to all of these different levels in life. And so if you're living a comfortable life and you're always staying on the shore, you probably only need to deal with these feelings once and you learn to live. But every single time you go to a new level, if all of a sudden you're knee deep in that water, these fear gates are going to come back up and you're going to need to learn a new dance with them. And you're going to need to learn how to like move through them. And as you get out into that deep end and you start doggy paddling, all of a sudden they're going to come back up again and you learn a new dance. And every single time you learn a new dance and you don't hide your head in the sand, but you dance instead, you gain a level of confidence and trust in yourself that you are more than capable of dealing with all of this, of dancing all of, with all of this, as making these tools that will move you forward in your success. And that, my friends, is your fear gates inside of your human design. And I think that this is such an incredibly powerful area of human design. It's not the only area in human design. There is so much, so much more to learn. Um, but it is such a powerful, powerful area. And I hope 
that you revisit this training. I hope that this training has resonated with you and I hope that you can take out your journal and really journal around some of these fear gates that are showing up inside of your life and what that means and whether you can either release or let it go. And remember, if you're releasing and letting it go, you need to look back at where the conditioning came into play. What are the stories that develop this fear inside of your life? That will help you release it because it will help you see things as a different truth. When I look back at my experiences as a kid, my perceptions around those experiences totally different, right? Then now I can see a different, stronger truth inside those experiences. And you know what? I can even see a new truth inside experiences that I had last week because there were different emotions at play when I had those experiences. Love you.